Welcome traders to another Tickmill Earnings Report Preview with me, Patrick Munley. Uh, before we jump into today's report, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. The material provided is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Views, information and opinions expressed by me in this recording are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report. We are looking at Zoom. Zoom, who announced after the close of the New York session today, looking for an earnings per share of 87 cents on revenue of 1.07 billion. Uh, investors will be watching the number of customers contributing over $100 thousand dollars in revenue over the previous 12 months. The size of this customer group provides a measure of two key capabilities. Zoom's ability to scale its offerings to its users' needs and the company's ability to attract larger organizations to its platform. Large customers are likely to be a more stable source of revenue compared to individuals or smaller organizations who may switch more frequently to other video conferencing services. Securing contracts with large enterprises will be especially important as the global economy continues to emerge from the worst effects of the pandemic and as many people begin returning to their company offices to work. It will also be important to secure those big revenue generating customers as competition with other video communication platforms starts to heat up. Zoom customers contributing more than 100 thousand dollars in TTM revenue have grown significantly in just a few short years. By the end of 2019, the company had 344 such customers. That total has now expanded to just over 2,725 as of the end of fiscal year 2022, which ended in January. That's nearly eightfold increase in just three years. While growth accelerated all the way through 2021 to the first quarter of 2022, it has been decelerating ever since. The number of large contract customers rose by 160% year over year in the first quarter of 2022. Growth then slowed to 130% year over year in the second quarter, a pace of 65.8% by the first quarter of the fiscal year. Analysts expect the pace to slow in further into 2023. They estimate the number of customers contributing that $100,000 revenue level uh, should grow to 49.9%. That still would be uh, a slow growth pace. Moving into some of the statistical trading patterns we can expect to see around Zoom earnings. Shares have moved lower in the immediate aftermath of earnings, 8 out of 12 previous reports. On average, the stock moved down 0.6% the first day of trading after earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, Zoom is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for an average loss of 2.1%. On average, <clears throat> the stock has moved lower by 3.9% one week after earnings. From a volatility perspective, options traders are pricing a pretty chunky move here, 21.3%. Uh, the stock has averaged a 10.5% move in recent quarters. From a flow and sentiment perspective, there's been notable buying 2,065 contracts of the 103 call expiring this Friday. In general, options uh, order flow is, is bearish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has just 11% expecting an earnings beat. Uh, Zoom shares have drifted down 25% post earnings announcement. Using the last 12 quarters of data, the average drift between these earnings announcements is about 11.4%. Let's take a look at the Zoom chart now and see if we can identify any near term technical trading opportunities. Uh, technically, we have seen the Zoom shares move down and complete their equality objective versus the 406, 26 swing high, which was a 91.32 uh, test. What I've identified here is a potential five wave sequence that is, it looks like it will culminate in an ending diagonal pattern. So I'm looking for uh, resistance into the 95 dollar area to ultimately get a 5 equals 1 objective to the downside of $54.23. From there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns. Certainly, we want to see momentum divergence maintained as an opportunity to move out of short positions and reverse to trade tactically to the upside, targeting me back into the high volume node around that 110 level. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.